Hey, this video is all about classical test theory, which is the foundation of measurement, and we've been using it for over 100 years. This is what we base everything with latent variables on. Measurement is an inference. So we're trying to infer something about a latent variable, and we're going to attain these by approximations. We're going to give you some items that you are approximating where you fall on these different ideas, and we're going to use that to infer something about your anxiety, for example. They should be one dimension. We need to be able to narrow it down to one specific aspect of anxiety that we are trying to explain. And we're gonna explain them in these abstract units, like a Likert scale of one to four. And the sizes of that scale, one to four, are unaffected by extraneous factors. So there's nothing that's influencing my ability to go from a one to a two, a two to a three, a three to a four. Think about this, that the data in hand that we're collecting is actually not what we're interested in. What we're interested in is what that number, what that data is implying about your anxiety. The raw scores are not measures. A measure is a tool that we are creating a ruler around for your anxiety. So low anxiety, medium anxiety, high anxiety. How do we define those? And what does your raw score say about you? Think about this quote. The raw scores are a transient description of never to be re-encountered situations. Pause the video and think about that for a minute. So my raw score that I get on my anxiety scale, I'm probably never gonna get that exact score again, but it says something about me at that moment in time. If I took that anxiety score before I took comps, it is gonna be very different than two weeks after I took comps. <laughs> I love this quote. Science conquers experience by finding the most succinct explanation to which experience can be forced to yield. Progress marches on the invention of simple ways to handle complicated situations. How are you going to explain the complicated idea of anxiety by asking me 10 questions and narrowing that down to one number? That's exactly what measurement's trying to do. And Wright sums it up so well. You're gonna see his name quoted a lot in this class. So let's talk about classical test theory. According to classical test theory, your response, so your raw score that you give me on the measure, is equal to your true value in real life plus some error. You can think about it this way, that the data that we're collecting is equal to the model that we're intending plus some error. Measurement error is not a mistake. So it's not that I made a mistake on my anxiety scale that I'm taking. It's not that I made a mistake on my stats exam. Think of it more as my response isn't accurate to my real life condition. And this could be as simple as my mood on that day is inflating or deflating my responses. So the first assumption of CTT is this equation. So your observed score is equal to your true score plus some error. Assumption two is that the error variance is expected to be random. So my, my errors that I'm making of what I'm telling you is my anxiety versus what my anxiety actually is, that that's just random and it's gonna have a mean of zero. So that assumption means that our error is essentially zero, which means that our observed score is essentially equal to our true score. So we're having complete faith that what you are reporting as your score for anxiety is your true score. And we're also expecting that that error is uncorrelated with your true score. So my impression and what I'm giving you for my observed data on my anxiety is not correlated with the true score of my anxiety. Think about that for a minute. Four and five. We're also thinking and assuming that the errors are uncorrelated across two tests or two parts of a test. So the error on one test is not in any way related to my error on another test. And the errors on one test are uncorrelated with the true scores on a second test. Let me give you an example of that. So that means that my true score on a depression test are not influencing my errors on an anxiety test. Take a moment, take some notes on that, rewatch this part of the video, and try to understand these five assumptions. 
So classical test theory with these first five assumptions that really defines how classical test theory is thinking about measurement, that my observed score is essentially equal to my true score and the error, we recognize that it's there, but we don't really do anything with it. We're assuming that it doesn't affect anything. There are three more assumptions that differentiate types of tests, like a parallel test that you'll see in the reading that you're going to do next. Implicit in classical test theory is that all items contribute equally to the overall scale score. So if we have 10 items that are trying to measure your anxiety, every item is contributing equally to this overall anxiety score. We are also assuming that the rating responses, the rating scale of one to four, in the example earlier, are equal interval. We are assuming that one, two, three, and four are completely equal and the intervals between them are the same. We are also assuming that error applies equally to all scores across the entire measurement continuum. So people who are scoring higher in the anxiety, their error is the exact same as people who are scoring lower in the anxiety continuum. That the error is the same across all scores, across all people, across the whole measure continuum. CTT is the most widely used. We've been using this for over 100 years, as stated earlier, and it's really easy to do with SPSS. The analysis is performed as a test as a whole, and we're not really focusing on items. So we're focusing on this anxiety level as a whole, what this factor is as a whole. And we are going to do some item statistics, and we're going to look at them, but all of those are sample specific. So anything that we find with the items are only applicable to that group of participants and on that group of items. If we remove an item, everything can completely change based on that group. With CTT, item difficulty is established by how many people got it right or not. And if we're looking at agree to disagree, then you just decide, do you want them to be more agreeable or do you want them to be more disagreeable as to what is quote right? So if everybody gets the item correct, then that's an easy item. And if people are not getting it correct, then that's a harder item. Item discrimination is looking at what is a good item. And we do that by correlating the test as a whole and how that item contributes to or correlates with the test as a whole. So if the item is correlating to the test as a whole very strongly, we have a strong relationship between that item and the whole, then it's a good item. And if that item is not correlating well compared to the whole, then that is a bad item or that item is not working. And in classical test theory, reliability is really looking at how the test holds together. So is everybody answering pretty much the same as a whole together? And we're going to use Cronbach's alpha for this one. So you're going to read an article. Don't get too caught up in all of the nitty gritty details, but I want you to come out having a pretty good understanding of classical test theory as a whole. And then we're gonna move into how do we actually develop these different measures. Our next face-to-face -face will go into how we go through all this analysis and really decide.